new labor laws which provided for severance payments if companies suddenly closed and left persons vulnerable. And so recently, when you had the closure of Island Hopper, the employees there were able to go to the Labor Department and collect severance payment thanks to the People's Action Movement. When you had the closure at the call center of the call center at the airport, the closure of City Drug Store, the closure of Jay's Shop and Save, persons were able to benefit because of the severance payment law put in place by a People's Action Movement government. The foundation for modern society had been laid. Infrastructural development second to none was a benchmark of the People's Action Movement administration. A first-rate telecommunication system with the creation of Scantel, now known as Lime. A joint venture between cable and wireless and the People's Action Movement government so fiber optic cables laid throughout the country. Cable television was introduced long before other CARICOM countries. Sustainable development that sustained its and Nevis rise to number one in economic growth in Latin America and the Caribbean was achieved under a People's Action Movement government. People had jobs. People had good paying jobs. People had permanent jobs. Not yes and not pep. Permanent jobs under a government of the People's Action Movement. And Cutie said she had money. Members and friends, brothers and sisters, fellow citizens, family, make no bones about it. We and our partners have come together. We have committed to working together to form a government of national unity, not for the good of Timothy, not for the good of Sam, not for the good of John L. R. Lindsay, not for the good of Mark Eugene Patches or Alexis or Vance or myself, but we have committed to coming together for the good of our country. We say to our people, we say to our people that better days are coming. We believe that the people of St. Kitts and Nevis have been failed by the Denzel Douglas Labour-led administration. The minority regime that occupies the seat of government in St. Kitts and Nevis in Church Street has shown an utter disregard for our constitution and the rule of law. We believe that Dr. Douglas's tenure as the head of government has divided us as a people. He has denied the majority of people, in particular, our young people here in St. Kitts, access to opportunities to better themselves, to own state land, to be independent, and to pursue their dream, to start their own businesses and pursue a chance to have a start and a better life. The two year long charade at the Bastia High School is no better of an example. At Bastia High School, you have a serious environmental health crisis affecting the lives of our young people. Had it not been taken for granted and treated with such disdain by the ministers of education and health. And it only goes to show how the breakdown of our government structure manipulated with an arrogance by the power of the Denzel Douglas Labour Administration has been endemic. So endemic 
that it has touched our children at Bastyr High School. No care, no concern for our children, for our future. The breakdown in our governance structures has been highlighted in the resolution based on the motion of no confidence filed with the clerk of parliament nearly 18 months ago and which the speaker in a clear dereliction of duty refuses to bring to the floor of the national assembly for debate and a vote. The failure of our government under Denzel Douglas sees the parliament opening without a deputy speaker as mandated by the constitution. The failure of our government in its attempt to manipulate the court office, the registry, where the Douglas government has refused to tell our nation that the substantive holder of this post of registrar has been barred from attending the court registry to perform her duties because of victimization and spite. And so documents continue to pile up and go unprocessed to the detriment of our citizens. We have not been told whether or not the proper authorization has been obtained under the Constitution by the Judicial and Legal Services Commission in St. Lucia for someone to officially act while, there's a, while there is a substantive holder prevented from carrying out her functions. We have been told, however, of the opening of a St. Kitts and Nevis consulate in the United Arab Emirates in Dubai without the knowledge or involvement of the then Foreign Minister, the Honorable Sam Conda. We have also been told that the mother of Douglas's children, Kate Alexis Douglas of Lex Consulting fame, has been placed, Kate Alexis Woodley, come like a marine of the woman, has been placed in charge of this diplomatic mission. And now this past week, we have had this very troubling advisory from the United States government concerning our citizenship by investment program, which points to a lax an incompetent management of a program that has become so crucial to our economic survival. We have heard the lies. We have heard Denzel Douglas say to us last year that the program has been suspended for Iranians. We are now being told by the US government that Iranians are still accessing our passports. We must get rid of that liar. We must get rid of Denzel Douglas. When we read the international news on the Denzel Douglas, it is always something negative. We read the news and we hear about debt. St. Kitts and Nevis, second largest in the entire world. We read the news and we hear about murders, St. Kitts and Nevis listed amongst the top 10. We read the news and we hear about persons incarcerated in prison, St. Kitts and Nevis in the top 10. It is time to get rid of Denzel Douglas. But what I have said to you is not anything new. It is not anything new. We recall that the current Minister of Foreign Affairs took to the floor of Parliament last year to make a statement concerning the Iranian who claimed to Canadian border officials that he had purchased a St. Kitts and Nevis passport, a diplomatic passport at that, for one million US dollars. The Mogadam affair. If nothing else, this program and in particular the SIDF has not been transparent, but we fear that there is potential for our country to, blacklist, to be blacklisted 
from countries in the international community who have been our friends and who we rely on for various forms of support. It was only last evening that I was told that the FBI is on the ground here in St. Kitts and that some four persons had their bank's accounts seized. One person, $11 million in an account. A next person who works in the office of the Prime Minister, I was told $10 million. A next person, we were told $15.5 million. And somebody in Nevis, an next eight million dollars. The FBI is here and they're watching them. Mark, somebody might go with them before the sheriff goes with them. <laughs> Members and friends, we believe that this breakdown in government has gone hand in hand with the breakdown of the economic life of our country. Recent reports from the IMF indicate that the estimated 3.8% growth in 2013. We say that this growth is nothing more than paper growth, not real growth with figures. Growth only from SIDF support, which makes the weak on the life fragility of our economy. We only have to look at the closing of the small shops in Newtown, Irish town and in rural areas which remain closed. I spoke earlier of Jay's shop and saved in Newtown closed. When I look in Sandy Point, my uncle Kaka Daniel's store closed and rented to persons from China. You look throughout the length and breadth of St. Kitts and Nevis, it is a similar situation. The small man forced to close his business. And that is why we say it is only growth on paper. We only have members and friends to look in the homes right here in St. Kitts and Nevis at night. We only have to look at the banks which are downsizing here in St. Kitts such as Royal Bank. We only have to go into the supermarkets and hear the cries of our people as they cannot afford to buy basic food supplies. Ask, ask the persons who have to buy medication if they have felt that 3.8% growth. Ask Cindy who went to the Pax Hospital recently and the nurse said to her that she only has three Puritan tablets and they are for cases of emergency and so she cannot get any. I asked my good friend Patsy Janice Richardson who went to Paxson recently and was told that they don't have any medication and so she had to journey to Bastia to get her daughter to buy her medication. Ask my friend Sean Crossley, who went to the Paxo Medical Facility. And when he got there, the nurse used a bandage look like a piece of tape to put on his wound. And when he asked the nurse what happened to the plaster, she said, we don't have any. Ask him about the piece of cotton that she had to cut into four different pieces because the government has not been able to supply our hospitals with the necessary resources. At our town hall meeting in Sandy Point, I said to you that there's one police vehicle serving Old Road Police Station and Sandy Point Police Station. Yesterday I was standing on Mount Idle in Sandy Point and I had no better of an example. You had an accident in Mount Idle. One vehicle hit the next vehicle and the other vehicle hit the next one. And while I was there standing, two young men jumped out of the last vehicle that caused the accident, full of blood, full of blood. 
one with piece of flesh actually hanging from his face. They had to walk it to the hospital because of the accident. But for almost an hour, the road was blocked because the one vehicle which services all road and sandy point had to go to Bastia because of a next incident that had happened earlier in the day. For a whole hour, the island main road in Sandy Point blocked because no money there to ensure that the police have vehicles. Team Unity, we give a commitment to the police officers that that will come to an end. Members and friends, at the same time, tourism remains stagnant. Our major hotels are catering to foreign students and they are reduced hours for hotel workers. You go over to Jakarta, you might see persons over there looking foreign to you and I. And you may think they are tourists. They are students from the Windsor University occupying the rooms at Jakarta. You go down to Port Zante. Stores down there are closing. On a Friday afternoon, you could have gone down there. You go to Fat Tuesday and relax. You go to Cloud Nine and relax. Lindsay could have gone to little Switzerland to get a little gift for his wife. Or Sam for his wife. No little Switzerland down there. Close down. Richard said you used to go down there too. You now have a pre-election program which so many young people depend on to get a minimum wage at the end of the week, which leaves little or no hope for advancement in our, con our economy. Where is the creation of private sector jobs? Where is the creation of sustainable, well-paying jobs? It is mind-boggling that the IMF has not pointed to the fact that approximately half of our labor force is either paid by the government or on the government-sponsored PEP, supported by SIDF. No country, no country can survive for long without an active and growing market-driven private sector. While people are hurting from the failure of sustainable job creation in the private sector, Hurting from lack of economic activity, this breakdown in governance has been at the heart and the center of our unity movement. It is now a crisis. There is the urgency of now. This must stop now. And we in PAM and our partners in unity will work tirelessly to turn it all around. We believe in and we commit ourselves to uphold the Constitution and to follow the rule of law. In keeping with our long-standing PAM ideals and values, we commit ourselves to working in unity to bring relief to our people by creating jobs and opportunities for all of our people. We have announced a series of programs which we will implement early in our term when we form the next government. Relief is spelt. Relief is spelt. And I want you to repeat with me. Relief is spelt. Yo. N. I. T. Y. How do you spell relief? Unity. On the government of national unity, we will eliminate the value-added tax on food and medication. VAT free food puts approximately $4,425 back in the pocket of every man and woman in St. Kitts and Nevis in the very first term. Assuming that you spend an average of $100 per week in the grocery store, you do the calculation. Persons will get a total per annum in the economy based on 48,000 persons, 42.4 million, 
and 212 million in five short years. Like the abolition of debt dues back in 1980, families mourning the loss of a loved one and faced with the cost of burying their dead will no longer have to pay VAT on funerals. Such a release from Douglas backbreaking pressure in and of itself allow persons to turn on their electricity again. Further relief will be experienced by all current and prospective NHC homeowners when the new unity government will give affordable homeowners a mortgage reduction, reducing their monthly payments and creating a further stimulus for economic activity throughout the country. Personal plans based on means testings will also be introduced for those having great difficulty in paying their mortgages. Another program of major relief that has been announced by a team will affect students who are faced with whopping student loans and have great difficulty in coping with them and pursuing their dreams here in our country. We want our brightest and best minds. We want our well-trained, educated sons and daughters of the soil to want to come and to contribute to our development. We propose to significantly reduce student loan payments for those students by offering much lower interest rates for all existing and future students. We consider that this will be a major investment in the skilled and trained pool of our future managers and business leaders who can bring entrepreneurs and innovative drive to our nation development. Members and friends, we have worked on our programs. We in PAM are satisfied that our values, our ideals have all been taken into account and we are satisfied that the People's Action Movement in Unity stands for trust in and of our partners and reconciliation. We believe that unity will ensure good governance, that unity will end political victimization, that unity will guarantee an electoral system free from blatant corruption, that unity will reform and improve civil service, that unity is for clean schools, healthy hospitals, good working equipment, that unity will have our citizens live in clean, healthy towns and villages. We believe that under unity government, the bonds that exist between petitions and divisions will grow from strength to strength. Unity will improve the lives of all of us. On the unity, there will be the rebirth and blossoming of a vibrant small business sector. We know unity must reduce poverty and unemployment. Unity will reduce NHC mortgages. Unity will remove that at, from food. Electricity will become cheaper and the financial stress to our people will be reduced. We said to you that under a government of national unity, you can look forward to a better St. Kitts and Nevis. Members and friends, brothers and sisters, fellow citizens, family, we in PAM, we give our commitment to unity. We will carry out our obligations to our unity partners. We are dedicated to our country, country above self, the urgency of now. Our party organization is ready. Our new executive is ready. PAM in unity have long settled that as part of the unity team, we will bring home the bacon and farm and be part of the next administration, the next government of St. Kitts and Nevis. 
And though you have had each of my candidates make some very powerful presentations, I want you to welcome them on stage once more. From East Bastia, I want you to welcome on stage the next representative for East Bastia, Ian Patches Leibard. From constituency number two, I want to bring on stage our next representative, our next representative, the young and vibrant Janelle Powell. Constituency number four, constituency number four, welcome on stage your next representative, Lindsay Fitzpatrick Grant. In constituency number eight, in constituency number eight, we have none other than Eugene Alistair Hamilton. Members and friends, brothers and sisters, family, 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 you ready? You ready? Send the pointers, no gimmicks. No gimmicks. No gimmicks. Next election, Sean Sherry Morlicks. Good evening and God bless you.